In this chapter, we're going to talk about how molecule, molecules move. Any uh, molecules that are at a, at a temperature, a finite temperature, such as the air molecules in this room, are moving around at a high rate of speed, and we'll calculate that speed. And they bounce off of each other and create collisions. Their, their speeds are in random directions, and their uh, speeds r range from very slow to very high, and, and they change as they make collisions with each other. So that's the subject of, of ki so-called kinetic theory and the understanding of gases, mostly, the ideal gas law. First, uh, a, a few concepts that you may have seen in your chemistry, we'll, we'll, uh, but if you haven't, we'll review them thoroughly. So to facilitate comparison of the mass of one atom with another, a mass scale known as the atomic mass scale has been established. So the first concept here is to define the atomic mass unit. This is defined as 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And I'd like to invite you to, to commit that to memory. 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, this is roughly the mass of a proton or a neutron. They have slightly different masses. We're not going to worry about the difference right about now. It's called U, the atomic mass unit. And it's defined in such a way that the carbon-12 atom, which is a very important atom in, in nature as well as in, in our human body, has exactly a mass of 12U. So 12 times this number, so uh, whatever that number is, 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27, you multiply that by 12, that's the mass of one carbon-12 atom. And you might say, what's a carbon-12 atom? Remind me. Uh, and the answer is it has six protons, six electrons to match the six protons, so, it'll, so it will be electrically neutral, and it also has exactly six neutrons. So the six proton, the electrons have a very small mass. The six protons plus the six neutrons make up the, the 12 U, 12 atomic mass units. So when you see carbon on the, in the periodic table, you don't see 12 there listed for the uh, atomic mass. You see 12.011. Why is that? The reason is that carbon comes in different isotopes. The carbon-12 isotope has six neutrons in it. The carbon-13 isotope still has uh, six protons, but it has seven neutrons. And it is much less abundant in, in nature, but it does, um, it, it does appear in nature. And so this represents an average for the uh, isotopic abundances of, of carbon in nature. If this were just carbon-12, then that number would be 12. Exactly. Okay. Define the mole and state Avogadro's number. One mole of a substance contains as many particles as the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. So it's a number. Avogadro's number is a number of atoms. And that number of atoms is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles per mole. A particle, when we talk about um, one mole of a substance, we're always talking about 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, if it's carbon, for example, molecules, if it's oxygen molecules, O2 molecules. But particle is the general word that we use to describe either atoms or molecules. It's particles. And uh, if you want a way to remember that, um, my wife's birthday is on the 10th month, October, uh, the 23rd day of October, and her name is Nadine, N-A-D-I-N-E, just for a way for you to remember her birthday or Avogadro's number, either one. So, interestingly, since one mole is as many particles as are in 12 grams of carbon-12, then that means that there are 12 grams per mole of carbon-12. 
So what this tells you is that not only when you're when you're finding, uh, not only does the, do these numbers mean um, the mass of a single atom, but this is the number of grams needed for one mole. For carbon, it's 12 grams in one mole because that's how you define um, the mole and Avogadro's number. But these numbers are also valid for anything else. So for hydrogen, if you have a mole of hydrogen, if you have this many particles, of hydrogen, it's going to be 1.008 grams for that mole. And this is the um, just codifying what I've just said as a concept. Relate the mass per mole to the atomic mass unit. So the mass per mole in grams per mole of a substance that has, has the same numerical value as the atomic or molecular mass of the substance. So for example, for hydrogen. Um, it has an atomic mass of 1.008 that you read off the uh, periodic table, and that's the number of grams per mole. But it's also the mass of a single hydrogen atom, which is 1.008, same number, but a different meaning. 1.008 times U, which is that atomic mass unit, 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms right here. So um, the number means two things. Number of grams per mole, it also means the mass of one atom measured in units of the atomic mass unit, 1.66 times 10 to the minus um, 27 kilograms. Relate the number of particles to the number of moles. This is not rocket science. It's, um, it is science. It is, um, if you have a number, a whole bunch of molecules, and you want to know how many moles you have, well, we know that there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles per mole. So if we have n is the number of particles, and we divide by the number of particles per mole, then the particles cancel out in the numerator and, and the non denominator, and you have 1 over 1 over moles, which gives you the number of moles. So if you, instead of having 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles, you have twice that, and you divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, then you end up with two, two moles. Nothing very fancy about that. Then uh, another concept to relate the total mass, m, of a substance to the number of moles of the substance. So we start off with the number of moles equation here. It's the number of particles divided by Avogadro's number. And then I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by the mass of each particle. So I've just multiplied and 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 divided, well, multiplied the numerator and multiplied the denominator by the same thing, so I haven't changed the equality. And then I ask myself, what is the mass of the particle times the total number of particles? So if you have a hydrogen atom, which weighs about uh, 1.66 times 10 to the, mi 10 to the 20, minus 27 kilograms, and you have 10 million of those, multiply 10 million by the mass of the particle, that gives the total mass of all the hydrogen that you've got there. So this product of the mass of the particle times the total number of particles is just the total mass of the substance that you have. Then the denominator is the mass of the particle times Avogadro's number. Now this one is the mass of a, of a particle measured in kilograms times the number of particles per mole. That is um, Avogadro's number. So that gives you something, kilograms per mole. So this gives the mass per mole of, of that substance, which for is what you read off the, the periodic table. For hydrogen, the mass per mole is 1.008 grams per mole. 
And that's that mass per mole here. So this equation, N equals M over the mass per mole, or sometimes called the atomic mass or atomic weight, depending on where you went to school. This is the total mass of the substance. This is the number of moles of that substance. And this is the mass per mole, which makes complete sense. Mass per mole, mass in the numerator, the masses cancel. You get the number 1 over 1 over moles, which gives the number of moles. Yeah, and I think a lot of you have seen these before. So an example, the Hope Diamond, 44 and a half carats, is almost pure carbon. The Rosser Reeves Ruby at uh, 138 carats, that's on the right. The Hope is on the left. The Hope is surrounded by um, many smaller diamonds, um, any of which would have been a very large rock on the finger of, of, um, of a person. But anyway, the Hope Diamond is a big one. So uh, one carat is equivalent to a mass of 0.2 grams. And so we're asked to determine the number of carbon atoms in the Hope Diamond and the number of aluminum oxide, I believe it is, molecules in the, in the ruby. So let's um, do it first for diamond. Diamond is mostly carbon, so let's consider it to be all carbon. So for the mass, this is the equation that we just um, derived. The mass is 44 and a half carats, but we know that there's 0.2 grams per carat. And so that'll give us a mass in grams in the numerator. And that's what we want in the numerator. Then in the denominator, we need the atomic mass of carbon, the mass per mole. And that, that we've shown in the, in the figures a couple of times, <coughs> it's close to 12, but because of those um, carbon-13 atoms, it's, it's actually 12.011 grams per mole. Let's see how the uh, units are going to come out. Grams will cancel, and we have 1 over 1 over moles, so the moles come up in the numerator, and that gives us 0.741 moles of carbon in the Hope Diamond. But the question actually asks us how many carbon atoms are in that. And for that, we need the relationship that N is big N over Avogadro's number. It's the number of moles is the number of particles divided by Avogadro's number, which is the number of particles per mole. <coughs> so instead, we solve this equation for big N is little n times Na, Avogadro's number. Plug in the number of moles plug in Avogadro's number, particles per mole. Sometimes it's written as 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles per mole. That's how I wrote it in the, uh, in the concept. Here, uh, since particles is not really, an, well, it's not an SI unit. They can come, it's kind of like, uh, like radians. It can come in and out of the equation at will. Sometimes it's just written as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd per mole. So that gives 10 to 23 atoms of carbon inside that Hope Diamond. Uh, so for this uh, ruby, uh, 138 carats, we do the same thing to find the mass as we did with, with, uh, with the Hope Diamond. But the um, mass per mole is a little more complicated. We've got two aluminum atoms, and each the atomic mass of each uh, aluminum is 26.98. Just look it up in a periodic table. Multiply that by two, because you have two aluminum atoms. And then you've got three oxygen atoms. And their uh, atomic mass is 15.99 grams per mole times three oxygens. So this gives the, uh, the entire mass of a single Al2O3 molecule. Aluminum oxide, I believe it is. So that's in the denominator, the number of grams per mole. Again, the grams cancel. We get a 1 over 1 over mole. We end up with uh, 0.271 moles. And then we do the same trick as we did before to find the number of atoms. And it's not actually atoms here. 
its molecules of Al2O3. It's particles, number of particles. 